So it's been around half a year since Samsung dropped the Z Flip 4. As a big fan of foldables, I was very glad to see this phone get some much needed improvements, making it a legitimately viable option for the masses. Now the Flip 3 was already a feasible pickup itself. It started at $999, which was a huge drop from the $13 to $1500 the first and second Flip models went for. Big improvements were seen with the 3. The 4 simply built on that formula. The upgrades were incremental, but they were necessary and beneficial refinements. Ever since I got the opportunity to borrow this device, I've wanted to pick one up for myself. Now, Full disclosure, while I haven't used this as my main phone for the past half year straight, I have used it more than long enough as both my primary and secondary device to provide genuine feedback, and man, I still love this thing. Obviously, the main theme here is pocketability. You're getting a big 6.7 inch display that folds in half and fits in the palm of your hand. Whether you're keeping it in your pocket or tossing it in a bag of sorts, this thing is such a great everyday carry companion. And it is definitely still a conversation starter. I mean, it's a looker. The build is top tier with premium materials. I love this matte frosted glass. I hope they stick with this for the Flip 5. And I hope they switch up the material for the side rails because gloss isn't my favorite, and that's just a minor gripe of mine. Long term reliability, especially when it comes to the hinge and overall structural integrity, remains to be seen, but I've been using this for a while without a case, and so far, so good. No creaks, no squeaks, nothing like that. It's solid and very well made. When it comes to usability, there is going to be a learning curve. For one, if you're new to foldables, this crease here in the middle is going to take some getting used to. Personally, I got used to it rather quickly and I kind of just forget about it now. Next, it's clearly not going to open and shut nearly as quickly as an old school flip phone. A lot of times you're just going to end up opening the phone with two hands, but that doesn't take away from the satisfaction you get closing it when you're done. It's so good. I'm also a big fan of side mounted fingerprint scanners, especially using it for gestures. It just makes sense and this one here works great. The speakers sound good, the haptics are solid, oh and I really enjoy how narrow the phone is. Even with this big of a panel, it's still very easy to hang on to. Thumbs up for the flat screen too. Another interesting point here, because of the added action of unfolding, I found myself checking and using the phone a bit less often since this extra action adds a little extra friction to the daily workflow. I end up checking and using the phone when necessary as opposed to mindlessly scrolling when I really shouldn't be. The cover screen is nice and convenient, but I think we're ready for a larger one. Now I don't think the cover display absolutely needs to be able to completely take over for the interior one. I think there are benefits to the limitations, but having a little added functionality here would be great. Either way, it's nice for glancing over at incoming notifications, checking the time, checking the weather, accessing media controls, and more. Without diving deep into the specs and whatnot, I can confidently say that performance here is quite good. I can't say I've experienced any issues with speed and fluidity or overheating and the ability to handle heavy tasks and gaming. The phone is fast, it's smooth, and there's really nothing to complain about here. Android 13 and One UI 5 have been nice updates with new things to customize, like the lock screen, new home screen widget functionality, there's quality of life stuff, and more. I just wish that Samsung DeX was here because, well, it's not. As time went on, I'll admit, I didn't really take full advantage of every feature unique to this phone, with the exception of a couple, but that's what's great about this. You can use it however you like and still get so much out of the experience. The cameras are not the absolute greatest, but they're not bad at all. They give you what you'd expect from Samsung, and I think they're good. When you start breaking things down, sure, you'll notice the deficiencies and the things that they can do better with the Flip 5. You do miss out on the telephoto lens, unfortunately. These things just aren't as versatile. They're not on the same level as the S22 Ultra, but I'm not sure they're supposed to be. All things considered, they're more than reliable, and I think most users will be satisfied. And when it comes to battery life, I am pleased to report that it's actually been pretty good. By today's standards, 3700 milliamps is a bit small. However, for most use cases, I think it'll be enough. With super heavy power user usage, you'll be charging well before the day is over. However, if you're looking at average use, just sending some messages, scrolling social media, playing a couple games, streaming media, you can get a solid five to six hours of screen on time, plugging in right before bedtime. Wireless charging is here, it's nice to have of course, and the 25 watt wire charging isn't blazing fast, but it gets the job done. I'll keep this part short and sweet. The Flip 4 is definitely worth looking into as of right now. 
With the Flip 5 on its way later this year, I wouldn't grab one unless I'm getting it for well under its starting price of a thousand bucks. Samsung continues its trade-in program, so you can get one for around 800 bucks, and that's solid. But if you look at the second-hand market, and I would tread very lightly there for obvious reasons, you can find Flip 4s for five to six hundred dollars in clean condition. Personally, I wouldn't settle for anything less than mint condition. Either way, this is a true lifestyle smartphone. You're not getting this because of its cameras, like you would with a Pixel. You're not getting this because of its specs. You're getting this because of its form factor, the unique features that come along with that. And because it's something different, it's cool, and maybe you find other smartphones boring. While this is without question powerful enough under the hood to be a workhorse, to be the do-it-all phone, for me, this turned into a fun and fantastic life complimentary piece. What phones really should be, if I'm being honest. Kind of like a workflow sidekick. Not that sidekick. It's great at being the unique standout phone that it is, but it's also really good at just being an everyday smartphone in general. It has never been easier to recommend a foldable, and it is only going to get easier later this year with a Flip 5. These phones are more than just a proof of concept. They're here to stay, and I love them. Let me know what you think of the Flip 4 and the current state of foldable smartphones in general. If you made it to this point of the video, drop a dolphin emoji in the comments for no reason whatsoever. Hope you enjoyed. It's been Zach, and thanks for watching.